Now in the chat, what are all these involving? So remember the ice bucket challenge and it was supposed to be for ALS, but what is ALS? So ALS is also called so amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. That's what ALS stands for. It's also called Lou Gehrig's disease. This was Lou Gehrig. He was a baseball player, and he. This is why they called it that because he just experienced this. He experienced this disease. So it causes a ALS causes degeneration of upper motor neurons, lower motor neurons, or sometimes both. So again, this is all about conscious control of your muscles. So if you have degenerations and lesions and the neurons that control your voluntary control of muscles, you're going to lose the ability to control your muscles and contract. So it's actually very, very, very rare. Like I think, yeah, 0 0.004 lifetime chance. So the good thing is that you probably won't experience this in your life. And the thing is that the, this is also why it was kind of good that they have this challenge because it brought a lot of awareness to this. A lot of research still is ongoing about this like why does it happen to people and what can cause it how do we find a cure for it and there are many things like glutamate excitotoxicity that means maybe you're getting too much of that stimulatory glutamate signal or sometimes with the abnormal immune response maybe they think that the immune system is attacking the upper motor neurons or lower motor neurons or sometimes proteins that are abnormal in the neuron can cause them to die or malfunction as well so they still don't know what causes ALS. Now, why do I bring this up? Or actually, it's interesting. In the UK, they spell they also call it motor neuron disease. And no, the E is not a typo. That's how they spell it in the United Kingdom. But who's one of the most famous people besides Lou Gehrig that had ALS? And rest in peace, Dr. Hawking. But Stephen Hawking had ALS. I didn't watch. I still have to watch. A, what was it called? I forgot what that autobiography, um, yeah, but what, whatever that one is, this is the theory of everything. Yeah, so Stephen Hawking, Sir Stephen Hawking, rest in peace, is an exception. He is not a typical case. So Stephen Hawking, he actually, majority of patients who have ALS, they die within two, five years of finding out they have ALS. But Professor Hawking, he lived... Yeah, 55 years after he was first diagnosed with ALS. But this is why he needed a wheelchair. That's why he couldn't speak. If he has ALS that affects his upper his motor neurons, he can't contract the muscles he needs to needs to produce speech. He can't contract the muscles he needs to walk around. But this is a thing. This is all about motor control going from the CNS to your muscles. But can he still read a book or, or if someone, ha he re can he still see a screen? Can he still interpret information? Can he still hear what people are telling him? Yeah, so the sensation maintains intact. It's just that he can't do, he wasn't able to control his muscles. Now, ALS symptoms. So early stage ALS, so things like muscle fasciculation. And this is twitching, so random twitching. And then muscle stiffness and weakness. Now... This, and I, I used to see some students get panicked about like, oh my God, I get this random twitches in my muscles. I feel stiff and weak. And don't worry. It's a, so again, ALS is very rare. Fasciculation, stiffness, and weakness. What can also cause that? A really good workout or not getting enough, too much caffeine. They can cause random twitches as well. So again, just because you have these doesn't mean you have ALS. And then... Middle stage, what you start to see is that you start to lose fine motor skills, and this is when they might start to do testing. Like, I have this twitching, but now I'm starting to lose skills. Like, maybe it's if you ha did something like sewing, they notice that they're a little more less more or they're a little more clumsy at it. Or say they did a sport, now, now they're noticing that they're losing coordination. Slurred speech again, speech requires voluntary contracting of all the muscles in your tongue, in your neck, and everything else, and even your lungs as well. So, ALS can also think again result in slurred speech and Babinski's sign. So, now we have this upper motor neuron lesion, right? And then, late, what you start to see is an inability to stand again, stand even just standing, even though you think you're not moving. You're still doing some isometric contractions to maintain your posture. 
and problems with swallowing. Again, you have all those pharyngeal muscles. We didn't go over detail in this class, but they do have, like even swallowing is a complex reflex involving skeletal muscles and inability to breathe. So your diaphragm is skeletal muscles. So if you have an inability for your phrenic nerve to actually tell your diaphragm to contract, or in, use accessory mus muscles of breathing, like your intercostals, you're going to lose the ability to breathe. So this is why L ALS, it, the, it's a neurodegenerative disease, but it's like dying in slow motion. And that's why it's really terrible. And I think, I believe, actually, it's a funny quote. I mean, not funny. And it's a strange coincidence. This is why I wanted to really get to this, because the the guy who who... The founder of the Ice Bucket Challenge, this happened just recently. Yeah, this happened literally two days ago. So the guy who found the founded the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, he died two days ago. So I think it's very topical, and this is why I really want to push through. Thank you for everyone who's staying on to this, but this is why it's very important because, again, it, but they raised how much money? Oh my God! Yeah, two point five million. So this he, mission accomplished. Rest in peace. And this is why I really want to get to this today. And also, yeah. So re rest in peace, Pat Quinn. And I, so again, this is our thing about ALS and the ice bucket challenge. Let's go back to. And don't worry, there's only a little more I'm getting to. And so then the stimulus, again, remember this is all the sensory part. Now we were ta just talking about the motor part, but are there motor neurons in this pathway? So we're showing the sensation and afferent signaling, going from stimulus to sensory receptor neurons to ascending pathways to the central nervous system. Are there motor neurons? There are no motor neurons in this pathway. So remember that, AL, so what happens with ALS, this affects those upper and motor, lower motor neurons. So it's affecting this part, the efferent signaling. But so it's taking this out of the equation. This is why people who have ALS, they lose the ability to use their skeletal muscles. But thing is, sensation remains intact. So this is why Dr. Hawking was still able to carry out his work. So this is why ALS is a really terrible disease because these people are pretty much trapped in their own body and they're fully aware of it. That's why it's something is not directly caused, but things like depression. And that, that's often a, another symptom that happens as a result of ALS because they're dealing with their own mortality. They can't do the things they used to be able to do, but they're still fully aware of the world around them. They can still see and hear their loved ones and everything around them. Now, actually, this is also why I really want to push this. So this was my Auntie Vi. And she was like, uh, yeah, so she was a triathlete. She was a registered nurse. And, and things that she was diagnosed with ALS in 2004. She's since passed away. I think she passed away in 2011. But yeah, so anti-vibe was also my mom. This is my mom. And she would, the anti-vibe were like BFFs. So the thing is that, I mean, she was like, as you can see, she, she was like a very famous in the triathlete community here in Hawaii. And like my mom, they were BFFs because they were both nurses. They're both Filipina. They, my mom also likes to run too. So they used to exercise together and whatnot. So this is why it's a really, really terrible disease because the thing is that, I mean, it's so unfair because like she was active, she was healthy. And then just like Lou Gehrig, she's an athlete in her prime. And then this stupid disease takes a hold of her. And then, but the thing is that like what they used to do is like my mom would help feed her and talk to her. Because again, remember, sensation still remains intact. Or another thing the family did for her, her family did for her is like she loved to surf as well. And a lot of her sons and daughters, they were also surfers. And so they would put anti vi they had a special thing so that she wouldn't fall off the board. But I mean they were able to even though she couldn't surf anymore due to her condition, she was still able to feel like the warmth of the ocean, feel the waves against her skin. So that helped a lot too. So again, this is why ALS is a terrible disease. I wouldn't wish, wish I'm my worst enemy because again, 
for these people, they're they lose their ability to do their daily life. But yeah, and I, I know uh, it's just, I, I, I have to always fight back tears every time. But it's a really terrible disease. That's why I'm really glad for people like Pat Quinn and really bringing a lot of awareness to this disease because again, it's a terrible disease and. It's due to, especially since, or actually all neurodegenerative diseases, they're really terrible because it is a prolonged thing that's difficult for the patient and the family. But again, yeah, so it's sad. I hate to end on a bummer. But, okay, so I just want to leave everyone with like, okay, wish you a thanks, happy Thanksgiving and safe Thanksgiving. I hope you and your loved ones are all well, okay? And this is really why I wanted to get to motor pathways and talk about ALS and whatnot. Because again, cherish your loved ones. And again, stay safe this Thanksgiving. See you on Monday, all right?